Hello, good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Okay, we are going to start with the second week. Um, time is going very fast. We are going to begin with the week number two. Um, we are going to work on the section number three of the platform. And we are in the middle of the course. So we are just going to have like this week and then we are going to have two more weeks. Um, so we need to... Um, like work on every um, exercise that we have. And also we are going to learn different ideas, different things. And also we are going to remember different information that we already know about different topics. So we are going to like um, make this time a uh, time for learning. So we are going to like learn different things. We are going to practice. We are going to listen. We are going to read in. We are going to do a lot of things. And I don't know if you um try to go to the platform during the day, but we are having kind of troubles with the platform. So uh, in this moment, it's not like working uh, so we need to be patient. So today we are going to work just on theory. We are going to talk about a grammatical topic and we are going to have a lot of information related to this topic. We are going to have uh, some exercises related to the topic. So we are going to like work based on this one topic. Vamos a trabajar basados en un tema. Vamos a hacerlo meramente teórico. Eh, no nos vamos a mover del documento, sino que vamos a trabajar en el documento y también vamos a hacer algunos ejercicios relacionados a ese tema que vamos a ver hoy. Eh, es un poco largo en teoría, pero no es difícil de entender. Es un tema que ustedes seguramente ya estudiaron antes. So we are going to begin with this session. That is the session number five of this whole course and the session number one of this second week. So you know that I said at the beginning, uh, don't worry, that's okay. Uh, I was saying in the first uh, session that I like to use these kind of phrases at the beginning of the week. I know that uh, right now it's almost the end of the day, but we are on this day. So we need to have these kind of phrases in mind and not just for Monday. We can uh, do it through the week. So I have this kind of phrases for you and we are going to have four phrases. We already have one and we are going to see the second one. And we are going to keep these phrases uh, to help us to achieve our goals and to feel good with the things we are doing. So we are going to begin with the phrase of this week. So here we have the phrase or the sentence or the statement for this week number two. And it said, your future is created by what you do today, not tomorrow. So in this case, you need to keep in mind that your present is right now. We can think about tomorrow because we have a lot of things to do tomorrow, but to construct or to create what we want, we need to think about who are we in this moment? Uh, what are the things that we are doing to achieve our goals? And what are the activities that we need to, to perform in order to complete these activities or these actions or this plan? Because we have a plan in which um, we want to achieve a, our, our main goal. So in this case, we need to see what we are doing right now, not what we are going to do tomorrow. 
The future is something that, that we are not going to construct in one day. And when we are talking about structures, you know that when we are talking about future, we have the structure will. And also we have the going to. We have two different structures. And when you are talking about something that you are not completely certain that you are going to complete, you use will. In this case, it's just like um, a thought or something that you want to do, or maybe it's something that you want to have, but you are not like uh, very sure that you are going to have that situation in your life. But when you are really sure that you are going to do something, that you are going to perform something, that you are going to achieve something, you use going to. That is completely different because we, with going to, you have a plan. We have something. You have a think about the steps, but with the structure wheel, is something that you are not sure that you are going to complete. Entonces, esta frase del futuro, que verdaderamente dice que está creado por lo que nosotros hacemos hoy, no lo que vamos a hacer mañana. Y es por eso ponía el ejemplo de la estructura del futuro, del will y del going to. Porque con el will, básicamente nosotros eh, hablamos de pensamientos, de deseos, eh, de actividades que nosotros queremos llevar a cabo en el futuro, pero que no estamos seguros que va a suceder. Es algo espontáneo, es algo sin planificación. En cambio, si utilizamos el going to, significa que ya pensamos en las actividades, ya pensamos en qué es lo que vamos a hacer y estamos trabajando para ello y que es más seguro que suceda. We are not uh, sure about the future, but we are constructing our present. So, we need to work in us today, not tomorrow. We are going to continue working tomorrow, but that is part of the plan. Now, after the phrase, we are going to talk about this topic that is, there is and there are. I know that you have uh, learned about this topic before, but we are going to talk about this one. There is and there are. We are going to talk about the difference between there is and there are because we learn what is um, the use of there is and what are the uses of there are. But now we are going to focus on the difference that we have between uh, these two uh, like uh, phrases, we can say. So we are going to talk about the difference between them. And also we are going to have some rules, some examples, and we are going to be clear with this information. And then we are going to like solve some exercises because we have four different activities for today. We are going to do four different activities. And Two are a reading exercise in which you are going to decide what are the um, the phrase that is best for the uh, sentence that we have on the activity. And then we are going to have two more um, activities in which you are going to do one that is an oral activity and the other one you are going to write. Tenemos tres skills for today. Vamos a tener tres eh, habilidades para hoy. Vamos a tener reading, vamos a tener speaking y vamos a tener writing. Obviamente vamos a tener eh, listening, pero es más que todo a la hora de, eh, de la explicación. Pero para las actividades vamos a tener dos de lectura, donde vamos a leer las frases que están ahí y vamos a decidir cuál de esas dos le queda mejor, si de these o there are. Luego, después de esas dos de lectura, tenemos una de eh, speaking, una oral, donde yo les voy a poner una pregunta y ustedes van a contestarme la pregunta, pero de forma oral. Y la actividad número cuatro es writing, es de escritura. Vamos a crear oraciones and you are going to help me with your sentences on the eh, the chat. So we are going to develop or we are going to practice three of these skills. 
vamos a practicar tres de estas habilidades. So we are going to make like a mixture of things. And it is best for us because we are going to like have this kind of practice. Now, we're going to begin with the theory. This is the listening part. Vamos a escuchar la teoría. So we are going to practice listening and understanding what we are saying. If you have some questions, you can write on the chat or you can ask. You have this space for you too. And you can ask whatever you want related to, um, to the topic or something that you didn't understand about the platform. So with the platform, we have like kind of troubles because it is not working. I don't know if you can access to the platform, but I can do it. I was trying to enter the platform and it is like impossible right now. So we're going to begin. Differences or yes, we're going to have differences between there is and there are. You know, we're going to say, ah, one is singular and one is plural. Yeah, so I know that is very... Uh, Easy to understand that one is a plural and the other one is singular. But we are going to see different things related to this one. We use there is and there are to say that something exists or doesn't. Something exists or something doesn't exist. Now, we are going to begin with positive sentences. And we have like kind of rules. We are going to begin with rule number one. And this, this rule said, you should use there is with singular countable nouns. Okay, in this case, we are talking about countable and uncountable nouns. I know that you already know what are the countable and uncountable nouns. And in this case, when we are talking about countable and uncountable noun, we're talking about something that we can count and something that um, they have different ways in which we can like measure the amounts or something. But in this case, we are talking about something physical that we can uh, touch and that we can count one by one. So in this case, when, when we are talking about countable nouns, we are talking about um, things that we can divide and count one by one. Estamos hablando de cosas que podemos dividir y contar una por una. Estamos hablando de nombres singulares contables. Uh, for example, we are talking about apples, uh, we are talking about pencils, we are talking about pen, uh, we are talking about um, coins, we are talking about shoes, we are talking about bottles, glasses, or in this case, glass, uh, we are talking about forks, we are going to talk about different things that we can count, but we are talking about just one one countable noun or single a singular countable nouns. So in this case, we have an example. And it says, there is one pen on the table. There is one pen on the table. Now, it is not really necessary to put the number in this kind of sentences. We can also use the article and you are like knowing that you are just using one thing. There is a pen on the table. And you are not using the, the number. 
that is like not necessary to use the number. Then we have rule number two. You should use there are with plural countable nouns. Okay, in the first one that there is, we have that we are going to use it with singular countable nouns. Now, with there are, we are going to use it with plural countable nouns. Ya tenemos una diferencia por acá. El there is lo vamos a utilizar con nombres singulares y contables. Singulares contables y el there are con contables plurales. So in this case, we already know because we are using the verb to be. And we already know that is, is for a third person, singular, and all of these uh, uh, things. So in this case, it's very easy to understand this part. And we have the example. And it says, there are five pencils in the box. There are five pencils. in the box. So in this case, we're like um, saying that we have more than one thing and we can count these pencils. Now we have rule number three. And this one said, you should use there is with uncountable nouns. Okay, but we're saying that we're going to use there is with singular countable nouns. But why we're saying that we need to use there is with uncountable nouns. So in this case, we can use a, there is with both, with countable and uncountable nouns. Vamos a utilizar también el there is para los nombres no contables. So en este caso tenemos dos usos para el there is. Y tenemos por acá un ejemplo. There is milk in the glass. There is milk in the glass. So in this case, we can count milk. We just, uh, we can say that there is some milk on the glass or in the glass, I mean. Now for a negative sentence, we're going to continue with the rules, but in this case, we're going to see the negative sentences because we are going to, um, we're going to divide this one because we're going to see different uh, aspects of this um, structure. So in this case, we're going to uh, follow the rule number four, but we're going to see the negative statements or the negative sentences. So in this case, for the negative sentence, we have another rule that it says, to construct a negative sentence or to say something doesn't exist, you should add not after is or are. And in this case, uh, with the negative sentences, you are going to use both. You can use there is and there are, but you know that we need to add a negative uh, word. Vamos a utilizar una palabra negativa. Y la palabra negativa que obviamente utilizamos para todos los negativos en muchos de los casos es el not. Entonces el not lo vamos a agregar después del is o del are. That we already know this information. But this one is rule number four.
So in this case, we have an example. And the first one said, there is not, there is not a tiger in the zoo. There is not a tiger in the zoo. And the next one said, there are not, and here we have this structure, there are not 10 books on the shelf. There are not 10 books on the shelf. Rule number five. This one said, you should use there are not any with countable nouns. And there is not any with uncountable nouns to indicate that our zero quantity is a, or of something exists. So in este caso, para decir que algo no, no hay una cantidad o hay cero de esa cantidad, Vamos a utilizar dos expresiones. There are not any and there is not any. Pero there are not any va con los nombres contables. There is not any va con los nombres no contables. Okay, so we have here this one. We are going to mark this. There are not any. And we are going to do it with this color. And we are going to mark this one. with the same color, that is this one, I guess. Yes. And the other one, there is not any with this one. Uncountable now. So there we have, a, with a countable nouns, we're going to use there are not any and with uh, uncountable nouns, we are going to use there is not any. When we are indicating there are zero here, zero quantity of something exists. En este caso, cuando estamos diciendo que no hay ya eh, una existencia, ¿verdad? De algo. So, zero quantity of something exists. And we have two different examples. There are not any people at the party. There are not any people at the party. And the other, there is not any milk in the fridge. There is not any milk in the fridge. So in this case, we have the examples. There are not any people at the party. No hay nadie o no hay ninguna persona en la fiesta. Y en el otro caso, no hay leche en el refrigerador. Entonces, estamos diciendo que había una cantidad de, en el primer caso de personas, o una cantidad de leche en el refrigerador, pero que ahora ya no hay nada de eso. Ya no hay ni personas ni leche. So, 
That is the uh, the phrase that we are going to use with this um like ideas or with this context. With the contractions, we know that we have different contractions for different phrases that we have in English. So we can use contractions when we are using the spoken language or when we are using um, a, this kind of informal language when we are making something um, like a message or when we are like sending a, a, a email to someone that is our friend or our family. Acuérdense que esas contracciones o la manera en la que nosotros acortamos las palabras eh, utilizando los apóstrofes y todo eso, lo vamos a hacer en un lenguaje informal. Cuando estemos hablando o cuando estemos escribiendo algo que no sea un documento formal. Como lo son, ¿verdad? Los mensajes, correos, algo por el estilo. Pero si ya es un um, documento formal, no podemos utilizar contractions. Because that is not formal and it is not valid on these kind of documents. So this one is just for informal documents. I mean, um, informal messages or uh, when we are uh, speaking with someone. And we have here, there is, we have there is not, we have, there are, and there are not. And for this one, we are going to do it like this. There's just like this. And in this case, we are going to do it. There is, in this case, we are going to use there's like the first and not is separate. And we have two different forms to write these contractions. There's not, or we can use this one. There isn't like this. And in this case, when you are using there are, you are not going to make the, the, uh, the contraction. In this case, you are just going to do it with the negative form. So in this case is there, aren't because in this case we have the word not but you are not going to have the contractions for the positive one para el positivo que es el there are no vamos a eh, utilizar una contracción aquí solo es con el negativo now we have the questions como hacer las preguntas con there is and there are and we have one rule here that in this case is rule number six and it says to construct a question, you should play is or are in from of there. Is the same thing with the other kind of questions when we are using the auxiliaries or when we are using the verb to be in which you are going to place uh, this word, this specific word in front of the other words. So this is the same thing. We have the examples here. And we have the first one. Is there a pen on the table? Are 
Are there any pencils in the box? Okay, so this is the information that we have here related to there is and there are, you know, that is not very complicated to understand because you already know what are the countable and uncountable nouns. Uh, you already know uh, how to use there is and there are, and maybe you are not thinking about the uh, use of there is and there are, but you are doing it very naturally uh, because this one is kind of um, part of the the structure that we use when we are talking. And um, we're just going to remember this kind of uh, words, this kind of uh, structures. So this is very easy. There is very uh, basic. We can say it like this. Now, we're going to have two activities, number one and number two, that is reading activities. Vamos a tener las dos actividades de lectura. But for this, give me a moment. I'm going to put here the images. Les voy a poner dos imágenes para que puedan eh, verlas, leer las frases que aparecen ahí. Y vamos a tener un periodo de tiempo en el cual vamos a, a, a leer, ¿verdad? Um, the exercises, and then we are going to decide what is the best option. We are going to do it one by one. So you are going to have two images there, but you are not going to do it uh, the two of them at the same time. We are going to do it one by one. So you are going to see just the first one. So give me a moment. Here it is. I have this one. And I'm going to put here, and I have this one. And I'm going to put it like this. Okay, I'm going to do this one, like kind of bigger. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to show you the number one. In this one is like, um, we can say this one is a paragraph that is uh, something that they are explaining. And you are going to fill these spaces with there is and there are. So you need to read this paragraph and then you are going to tell me. And in this case, we have one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. There are ten spaces. So then I'm going to write the list of there is and there are uh, in the other part. We are not going to do it on the image. Así que vamos a leerlo y luego vamos a ir leyendo one by one these phrases. And you are going to help me with the phrase that is missing. Luego me van a ayudar a completarla con las frases que faltan. There is and there are. But we are going to have five minutes to complete this one. Cinco minutos para esta. Luego vamos con cinco minutos para la número dos. So let's read this paragraph.
Okay, it's time to see what is the uh, words that are missing here. So we are going to begin with phrase number one. We are going to uh, read one by one and you are going to tell me what is the word or the phrase that we are going to use in that statement. So in this case, you are going to tell me there is or there are. So we are going to begin with the first one. My name is Annie and I live in a very big house. What is the word missing here? There are. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. There are 23 rooms in my house, but... Mm -hmm. yeah. There are. Okay. There are only 12 bedrooms. I live in one of the rooms of the third floor. In my room... There is. There is. A... Okay. There is a huge bed and... There are. Okay. Yeah. There... Okay, very good. There are nine windows. My bedroom isn't small. On my bed... There are. There are. Okay, there are lots of pillows. And... There is. Okay, very good. There is my cat, Fluffy. In my closet... There are. There are. Very, very good. There are many toys and. There are. Okay. There are. Okay. Very good. There are also many clothes. I don't have a bedroom in my bedroom, but. There are. There is. There is mm -hmm. a bedroom. Mm -hmm. Excellent. There is a bathroom next to my room. Also in my house. There are. There are. Very good. There are two kitchens, a big dining room, and three living rooms. The house is really big. Muy bien. Excelente. Ahora, simplemente a veces cuando estamos leyendo algo como esto, eh, para no confundirnos, podemos eh, basarnos en la, los auxiliares, ¿verdad? O en los artículos que aparecen antes de un nombre. In this case, when we are like reading 23, 23 habitaciones, ahí ya sabemos, incluso por cómo se eh, escribe la palabra room, que ya lleva una S, ya sabemos que es plural. Entonces, por ley, ya sabemos que vamos a utilizar el there are. En el caso de a huge bed, estamos hablando, vemos que no lleva la S de beds, sino que decimos a huge bed, una cama grande, y llevamos el A o la A al principio de la palabra, entonces sabemos que es there is porque habla solo de una. Entonces nos vamos a fijar en esa parte. Now, we are going to see the second one. That is this one. This is not a paragraph. They are 10 different sentences. They are separate. But in this case, we are talking about negative form. We are going to talk about there isn't, er, there aren't. And we are going to be very careful with countable and uncountable nouns. So we are going to read one by one the sentences and then the same thing. We have five minutes and then you are going to tell me the answers with their isn't and their errand. And we are going to read one by one and you are going to tell me the, uh, the phrase that is for this sentence. So let's begin.
Okay, let's see what are the answers for this second exercise. So in this, we're just going to have the negative uh, statements or the negative uh, phrases. We're going to begin with number one. In this case, in number one is there isn't or there aren't. Um, there are. There is. There isn't. There isn't. Okay. There isn't. Okay. In this case, there isn't. There isn't because in this case it's singular. There isn't a flight from here to London. No hay un viaje de aquí hasta Londres. Next one, number two. There isn't or there aren't. There yeah. aren't. There aren't. Okay, let's see. There aren't. You said. There aren't any movies. In this case, we're using the plural form. There aren't any movies that I want to see in the cinema. No hay ninguna, o no hay, nin, o no hay películas que yo quiera ver en el cine. Third one. Or number three, I'm very hungry, but there isn't. Okay, very good. There isn't. There isn't any food in the refrigerator. In this case, we are not basing um, the use of there is or there are with the word any. Remember that we have there is a, there isn't any or there aren't any to say that it's zero uh, of something. So in this case, it's related to the word if the is singular or plural. Aquí ya tenemos dos estructuras, la there isn't any or there aren't any, pero nos basamos en la palabra, es singular o es plural. Ahí es donde nosotros vamos a decidir si es there isn't any or there aren't any. Uh, okay, next one, number four. We want to go to the concert, but there aren't. Excellent. There aren't any tickets. Very good. Number five. There isn't. Ah, there isn't any money. There isn't any money in my bank account so I can pay the bills. Number six. There isn't. Mm. There aren't. Okay, there aren't. There aren't 70 minutes in an hour. Number seven. In my neighborhood, There isn't. Mm, um, there aren't. Okay. Children. Because we are talking about children and they are? Children. Plural. Good. So in this case, is there aren't. Very good. Number eight. Henry can bake a cake because... There isn't. Uh huh. There isn't. There isn't any sugar in the cupboard. Number nine. It's sunny today, and there isn't. Ah, okay. There isn't a cloud in the sky. There isn't a cloud in the sky. And the last one, number ten. I'm sorry. There aren't. There aren't. Okay, there aren't any letters for you today. Very good, excellent job. Okay, we have these two reading exercises in which we need to read the statements um, and to decide what is the best option for all of them. Now, remember that we have four, four different um activities. In this case, if you can see the hour, we have just five minutes. So in this case, we're not going uh, we are not going to complete 
the activity number uh, three and number four. But I'm going to write the question and you are going to think about your answer and you are going to tell me your answer tomorrow. That is the first thing that we are going to do because we have um, another activity. So we are going to complete the activity number three and also we are going to complete the activity number four tomorrow. So in this activity, we are going to describe our neighborhood, but also we are going to use there is and there are. Vamos a describir nuestro, podemos decir, um, nuestra colonia, nuestro barrio, nuestra avenida, eh, el lugar donde vivimos. We are going to describe the neighborhood, pero siempre vamos a utilizar o vamos a tratar de utilizar frases que lleven there is and there are to um, describe that place. There is a, there isn't any, because we can use both of them, positive and negative. And if you want to add a question, there is no problem, but I think that is better for like positive and negative statements. So activity number three. Describe your neighborhood. And here we have, um, yes, I'm going to add two questions. This one is just to help you to construct this, um, this description of your neighborhood. In the question number one, we have, what is there in your neighborhood? ¿Qué hay en su lugar donde ustedes viven? En su, en su barrio, en su colonia, en su pasaje. What is there in your neighborhood? And you can ex explain here the different things that you can found or you can find in that place. And the second question is, what doesn't exist? What doesn't? Aquí podemos ver dos cosas. Algo que hay en el lugar donde nosotros vivimos. O sea, vamos a describir cómo es, qué cosas tiene, qué podemos encontrar ahí. Y también qué cosas nos hacen falta, que tal vez otros lugares sí los tienen. Eh, for example, um, in the place I am living, in Spanish, this one is a colonia. It's not um, a barrio, no es una avenida, no es una residencial, es una colonia. So here in my neighborhood, there is a lot of houses. We have a lot of trees. There are many... many people um, there is um, what a church well in this case it's a mini church because it's kind of a small or a small church um, there is a school in the same place but um, there aren't any libraries there are not any a uh, drugstore. There are any restaurant near here. We need to travel a lot to go to a place like this. It is not a lot, but like, I think like 20, 25 minutes, something like that. So in this case, you're going to explain the things that you can find in your neighborhood and the things that you cannot find on your neighborhood. And then we are going to do this um, this activity in this way. You are going to tell me what is in your neighborhood and what is not in your neighborhood um, tomorrow at the beginning of the session. Or if we are not complete, we are going to do it in the middle of even um, at the end of the, of the meeting. Don't worry, we are going to do it in any way. 
So it's time to end this session number one of the second week. So we are going to end the session here and we are going to see each other tomorrow in the, se the session number two of this second week. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow. Good night. See you tomorrow. Chief. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow.